Hello world, this is Random Fix, and in this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to get the drive cycle for your 1996 and newer Audi completed. You are going to need one of these OBD2 readers. I'll have a link to it in the video description down below. And you want to connect it to your vehicle's OBD2 port, which will be found in the driver's side footwell area. And yours might be purple, and I'll show you guys what it looks like on the screen here. Once it's connected, you guys will see that it has power. And to scan the vehicle, you want to go ahead and turn the key. So basically that the check engine light is on, but the motor should not be running. And that way you can go ahead and scan your vehicle and check the monitors. And we're going to use this OBD2 reader to go and check the status as we complete this drive cycle. Stay tuned. And before we jump into the drive cycle, check out the Smog Tips playlist. And once you click on the playlist, you can actually watch the whole drive cycle in process, where I'm going to show you how to do this on the road. And if you need further assistance on how to understand these inspection monitors, check out this video titled, What to Do to Smog a Car. Hello world, this is Random Fix. And in this video today, we're going to be discussing the Audi drive cycle procedure. So if you have a 1996 and new Audi, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set your monitor so you can get your vehicle to pass an emissions test. Before we actually dive into the drive cycle process, we're going to go over some basic vocabulary. One of the very first terms here is going to be OBD2. And OBD2 basically stands for Onboard Diagnostics Type 2. And this started in 1996. Before 1996, each vehicle manufacturer had their own port this whole thing was a mess. So after 1996, when this OBD2 system came on board, you could buy one of these little readers here for under 30 bucks. So I'll have a link to it in the video description below. That way you can actually check the monitor status and you can use it to troubleshoot most generic codes on any 96 and newer vehicles. So it's really nice to have handy. DTC stands for Diagnostic Trouble Codes. And then there's two different kind of diagnostic trouble codes when it comes to the engine control module. Very first is going to be a pending code. And then there's a hard set code. A hard set code is one where the vehicle knows that there's an issue and it's when it confirmed it and it triggered your check engine light on versus a pending code. A pending code is one where the vehicle thinks there's something going on and needs more information and yet it has not triggered a check engine light on. And if you're in a situation where your check engine light is turning on within milliseconds, you probably have some kind of hard set code that is caused by an open circuit. So it could be a damaged wiring, damaged sensor. Something is basically causing that short to get identified instantly because most of the times the vehicle is going to go run a check. And it shouldn't be happening like that if it was a regular monitor. So go figure out what's going on there before you attempt the drive cycle. Because no matter how well you do this drive cycle, if you have a pending code or a hard set code in the system, it's not going to work. MIL stands for Malfunction Indicator Light, a.k.a. the check engine light, service engine light, service engine zoom light. When you're using an OBD2 reader, like I showed you in the very beginning of the video, you're going to see the display and it may read OK. And that's the same exact thing as complete, set, and ready. When you come across an INC, this means that that monitor is incomplete, unset, and not ready. And they basically means that monitor is not applied to your vehicle. So go ahead and skip it. And I have five major monitors for the inspection monitors here listed in order. And this is the order that they normally set in. So the very first monitor to set is going to be the oxygen sensor heater monitor. And in short, the oxygen sensor heater helps oxygen sensor get up to speed faster so the vehicle can do a better job of controlling the emissions. We have the oxygen sensor. 
So on a four cylinder Audi, for example, you have at least two oxygen sensors. So there will be one before the catalyst that's known as the pre-cat or upstream oxygen sensor. There's another oxygen sensor after the catalytic converter that's known as a post-cat or downstream oxygen sensor. We have the EGR monitor. We have the CAT monitor, and the CAT monitor basically is going to stand for the catalyst. We have the EVAP, and the evaporative emissions control system basically, in short, keeps the fumes out of the atmosphere. And as a helpful tip, when you're doing this drive cycle procedure, you really want to use a stopwatch because you can better time everything. Here are some technical parameters to understand about the Audi. The very first thing you want to ensure is that the check engine light is not on and that there's no fault codes in the system. These do need to be fixed first before you actually conduct the drive cycle. You want to ensure that your vehicle has the correct amount of gas. Three-fourths is highly recommended in park on a level ground overnight when you're conducting this test. Avoid sudden acceleration, sharp turns, or sudden braking. I like to avoid hills as the fuel basically just moves around in the gas tank and it'll delay my EVAP monitor getting ready. Make sure you have a very good battery and that the alternator, everything is working the way it's supposed to because a bad battery can cause all kinds of issues including your drive cycle monitors not completing. All accessories should be off, like the rear defroster, the lights, the AC should be off. You shouldn't use cruise control during the drive cycle here too. The throttle valve angle should not exceed 20%, so you want to keep it light with the accelerator, unless otherwise noted. You want to avoid extreme temperatures. And the night before you conduct this drive cycle, make sure you lock the car, keep your keys far away from your vehicle because a lot of the newer Audis will detect the actual keys and this can keep certain monitors from running. So here's a very simple drive cycle here and I'm gonna go over a little bit more of an advanced drive cycle after this. So this is the one that will work for about 80% of Audis and if you have a vehicle that's a little bit more stubborn, maybe has more miles, we're going to go over that a little bit more. So for this drive cycle, it's very simple. You want to make sure it's a cold start and that the air and coolant temperature is basically between 50 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And you want to make sure that the parking brake is up. Go ahead and start the engine and let the vehicle just idle in position without touching the gas pedal, moving the vehicle, you don't want to do anything. And you want to make sure that the rear defrost is off, the AC is off, and that the radio is off as well. In step two, you want to make sure you go drive on a level ground, and you want to go and drive at a constant speed of 56 miles an hour for 15 minutes. and you want to go and ensure that you're in the highest gear so be in your fifth or sixth gear if you have a manual transmission if you have an automatic be in your highest drive gear possible and your engine speed should be between 1800 rpm to 2200 rpm step three you want to go ahead and prepare to slow down and this is very crucial for some of the monitors like the EGR, you want to basically coast. And the way you do that is you remove your foot off the gas pedal and you don't touch the brake, you don't shift gears, and you want to slow down to under 15 miles an hour. And once you're under 15 miles an hour, then you can use the brake to come to a complete stop. Once stopped, you're going to go ahead and just let the vehicle idle in gear for one minute, so that's D for automatic vehicles. And if you have a manual transmission, just keep it in neutral. And then you wanna let the vehicle idle another minute in park. 
And if you have a manual transmission, you want to just let it be neutral again. Turn the vehicle off. And you want to use that OBD2 reader that I showed you in the very beginning of the video to scan the monitors and to see what monitors have completed. And when you get back from your test drive, you want to scan it. And if everything is done, it'll say zero codes incomplete, seven that are complete, and four that don't apply, and zero codes found. And this is a 100% chance that you're going to go ahead and pass your emissions tests as long as you haven't altered anything on your vehicle. And your vehicle passes the visual inspection as well, which I'll cover a little bit later. And as a helpful hint here, only focus on the unset monitors. So if you did this drive cycle and everything worked out, but you see that your EVAP monitor is incomplete, so you want to make sure that you complete this a few more times to let the EVAP monitor get ready. In some states like California, the EVAP monitor is actually exempt, so you may be okay. If your catalyst is not ready, you want to focus more on this high-speed driving on your next cycle of this. You may have to repeat this several times. If your EGR is not ready, you really want to focus on coasting on step three here and doing your regular drives too. Just see if you could back off the accelerator and just let the vehicle coast. And if you see your oxygen sensor is not ready, you want to m focus more on the warm-up stage here on step one. And if your oxygen sensor heater monitor is not working, again, you want to refer to step one here and make sure that you met all the requirements as far as the parking brake being up, the defrost being off, the AC should be off, the radio should be off. And the warm-up is very important. So if your oxygen sensor heater and your oxygen sensor monitors don't get ready, your catalyst monitor may never get ready because those two monitors actually will help ensure and measure the efficiency of the catalyst. So this is all very important that we get those initial monitors as far as the oxygen sensor heater and the oxygen sensor monitor ready. And this is the more advanced 17 step drive cycle. And if you guys check the very bottom of the video here there's going to be a link in the description box where you can actually go and just view this you can print it out and that way if you really need to conduct this 17 step drive cycle because this is more involved you guys can just print it out and I'm going to scroll through this really quick with you guys so this is going to be the first through nine steps and step 10 and step 17 are going to be down here and basically on step 17 just know that you're going to have to repeat this drive cycle once again so essentially this is almost a 34 step process here for the longer drive cycle so i really like the first drive cycle and for a majority of the audi vehicles that drive cycle will work as long as everything is working the way it's supposed to Hey guys, really quick, if you're finding this video to be helpful and you're enjoying the content, please consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel as well as it lets YouTube and me know that I'm doing a good job and bringing you guys value content. Thanks. And once your monitors are set, you're ready to now go and get the vehicle smogged. Remember, if your vehicle is a 96 through 99 vehicle, you will have to get the vehicle tested on a dyno at 15 and 25 miles an hour. They're gonna use a gas analyzer to test the vehicle's emissions. They're gonna test your gas cap. They'll do some other tests. And they're also gonna do a visual. Even if you have a 2000 and newer vehicle, they're gonna do a visual. But on a 2000 and newer vehicle, they're just gonna check for the OBD2 readiness. So they're gonna plug in their OBD2 reader into the vehicle from the state and check the monitors. Remember the visual inspection consists of checking for altered parts like cold air intakes, throttle spacers, cracked vacuum hoses, missing catalytic converters, 
They're going to do a visual smoke test to make sure that you don't have clouds of smoke coming out the tailpipe. And as of the end of 2020, this is the current rules here for California. And California happens to be one of the stricter states. So you have to check the regulations for your own state. Here in California, if you have a 96 through 99 vehicle, you can have any one monitor show incomplete and still pass. Now, depending on the smog station, they may just go ahead and plug in their OBD2 reader. It's not connected to the state. See that you have a monitor that's incomplete and tell you to keep driving because they don't want anything to come back to them to show that on their record for the shop showing that they passed X amount of vehicles with unset monitors. So if that happens to you, go to another station. And if you have a 2000 and newer vehicle, only the EVAP could be unset. And with diesel powered vehicles, 98 through 2006, basically all the monitors have to show complete. On newer diesel vehicles, 2007 and newer, you can have any two monitors show incomplete. And remember when you're selling a car, it's the seller's responsibility to make sure that they supply the buyer with a smog certificate. And normally there's no way of waiving this requirement unless you're selling to a dealer or dismantler. So even if you write as is on the title, that doesn't really mean anything because if it goes to court, you're most likely gonna lose that suit unless they're a dealer or dismantler. And if you're a buyer, never buy a vehicle unless all the inspection monitors are ready. And 99% of the times, if the inspection monitors are not ready, is because somebody has erased that check engine light on purpose to cover up an existing issue, whether it's a dealer or a private seller. And 1% of the time is caused by a weak or faulty battery and if this is the case you still have to find out why that battery is dying because you could have a potential short you could have an alternator and when there's a bad battery in a vehicle all kinds of funny things start happening from smog emissions monitors not getting ready to transmissions acting up and it's a big list of potential issues I'm going to show you guys the configuration on a typical four-cylinder vehicle here. And on a typical four-cylinder vehicle, you have two oxygen sensors and one catalytic converter. So here's the vehicle here. This is the engine. And as the exhaust makes it out, the engine block through the headers, downpipe, and it will go past this upstream oxygen sensor, which is known as the pre-cat oxygen sensor. And then the exhaust will go through the catalytic converter here. Then the downstream or post-cat oxygen sensor will go ahead and get a reading. And the way the computer is able to verify the efficiency of the catalytic converter here is by taking this reading and this reading and comparing them based on the parameters of what the vehicle manufacturer has set up to verify that this, in fact, is working correctly. And after the emissions pass the downstream oxygen sensor, it goes through a little resonator here, down through the tailpipe, through the muffler, and out to the atmosphere. And here on a six cylinder or a cylinder, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of diagrams down here. On these, you can have three or four oxygen sensors, depending on the setup, and one or two catalytic converters. So, if we look at this diagram right here, this is a V6 motor. So it has a total of six cylinders, three on one side, three on the other side. thus making it a V6 motor. And whatever side cylinder number one is located on, that's called bank one. So if you're dealing with an emissions issue and it tells you that sensor one on bank two is bad or acting up, you can look at the opposite side of cylinder one and know that this the opposite side this sensor right here that may potentially need to get replaced so we have one two three oxygen sensors on this vehicle and one catalytic converter 
And this too is a V6 motor. The only difference is the cylinder number one is located on the lower side here. And this is bank one. And now this is bank two. And here on this setup here, this is a V6 motor. And we have a total of six cylinders again, three on one side, three on the other side. But now we have one, two, three, four oxygen sensors and one, two catalytic converters. And if it was a V8, it would just have an extra cylinder on each side. And here's my top eight tips to pass an emissions test. The very first one is gonna be make sure that you smog right the very first time. So if you know your vehicle has an issue, you want to make sure to get that issue fixed before you try to go and smog the vehicle. And you should never really fail an emissions test because with these simple scan tools, you can verify that all the monitors are ready. And before you go to the station, you can just do a simple plug-in and it'll let you know that the car's inspection monitors are ready. And you can do this with confidence, knowing that you're going to go and pass now because any failed Emissions data will get reported to Carfax and AutoCheck, and this can actually reduce the value of your vehicle. Number two, you want to make sure that the check engine line is off but working. So before you purchase a vehicle, put the key in the ignition and turn it to the very last position and verify that the check engine light is there. And I've seen people actually remove the check engine light. Three. This really helps with those 96 through 99 vehicles. You want to make sure that the tires are properly inflated as this will lessen the load and will allow the vehicle better operations. The same thing with the oil here. The oil actually contains a lot of the hydrocarbons and since they're going to be doing a real emissions test using a gas analyzer, you want to make sure you reduce the hydrocarbon numbers here and this is a simple oil change. And Tip five, you want to go ahead and take the vehicle for a very long test drive before you reach the emission station and leave the car on if possible before you get it tested, with the emissions probe. Tip number six, use some fuel additives. I personally love the Lucas Oil upper cylinder loop. You'll find a link to this in the video box below as well as anything else that I showed you guys in the video. Tip number seven, you want to avoid wet weather and this is not to say that you cannot pass an emissions test with it raining outside however you'll just get much better results if the tires are dry and tip number eight do not disconnect the battery unless you have a battery saver device set up and these are about 15 bucks and basically this will keep your cards computer data your clocks your radio stations all in sync and remember, the only real solution oftentimes is to repair or replace the component. So there's no such thing as a miracle in a bottle. But if you're looking for a quick fix for your catalytic converter, just because maybe you don't have the time or money to go and have that issue fixed, I have a couple of videos down in the video box below that cover such products and I'll give you guys my honest and truthful review of them and some preventative tips here I love doing everything myself so if you can try doing some of the simpler repairs yourself like the engine oil changes transmission fluids differentials changing the filters the engine air filter the cabin air filter the fuel filter if you clean your throttle body change the wipers and do the brakes on your own vehicle. This is such a nice thing to start doing because the more you learn about a vehicle, the better off you're going to be as far as taking care of it. And what I have found out from my own experience of working on cars over the last 27 years is the time that I actually save doesn't even compare to the amount of money because a lot of people will go and get their oil changed at the dealer and that could take one hour or two hours. Most of the times I'm able to change the oil on my vehicle in under 15 minutes. So not only did I save between 60 to 80 bucks, but I saved myself at least 45 minutes of not having to wait around. 
and I got it done and I can go move on with my life. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and it was helpful. If it was, please comment down below. If you guys got any comments that you would like to share with me, please do so. Let me know if the video worked for you guys. And if you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting the subscribe button right here. So anytime I post videos that are aimed to save you time and money, that you guys will get notified. And also, if you need additional help, please check the Smog Tips playlist. It's going to be shown at the end of the video here. On there, I have videos on cheats for your catalytic converter. If you're having a catalyst problem, if you need to get certain monitors, I list each monitor and I go over it a little bit more in depth. So check those out. And I'll have a link to that video where I actually show you the drive cycle in action. And that way you guys get an idea of what to do. Thanks.